Well, I got to take a little bounce in my step around these parts. I warned you all. I said, if USC gets good fast, I am going to be really difficult, uh, incorrigible, not fun to be around. And right now, I've got him as the number one team in the country, and I'm being completely objective. Let's bring Joel Klatt onto our show. Number one USC, Bama, Georgia, you know, those schools, Ohio State. <laughs> I actually, I actually, I want to temper it by saying um, – that they're not good enough defensively, in my opinion, to compete for a national title. So let's just start with the USC thing before I get let's Texas Bama. Let's start in. Okay. There. So I believe the transfer portal, you can solve one side of the football per year. Sure. I think they solved their offense. I mean, that's, I think that's an understatement, to be quite honest with you. It's, it's playing at a level right now that I didn't think was possible for really? them in one year. I mean, that's what the numbers bear out. Um, if, if you're a USC fan, you should be pretty pleased because they're actually right now um, operating within a blueprint that has been to a playoff. Not just like, you know, oh, man, that, it's, you know, they're doing well. They're doing right. well. No, 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 no. This version of USC, what they've done, granted, in two weeks, is actually better in a yards per play scenario than the 2018 Oklahoma Sooners with Ky Kyler Murray. That went to a playoff. That Kyler Murray team. In a better conference. In a better conference. That, that Kyler Murray team averaged 8.6 yards per play, which is absurd, by the way, right? I mean, that was number one in the country that year. This USC team averaging more than that, 8.62 yards per play. That OU team in 2018 gave up 6.13 yards per play. Bad defense. We knew it. Yes, they weren't national championship caliber, but they went to a playoff. And by the way, played scrappy against the Bama team I believe in in an orange bowl in the semifinal this USC team guess how much how many yards they're giving five 5.09 so th their margin right now in yards per play offensively and defensively better than a playoff team from Oklahoma so a Lincoln weaker Riley, conference Lincoln Riley knows how to take this type of team to a playoff and when you look at what Notre Dame is doing early in this season and you look at where the way Utah struggled with a mobile quarterback and Anthony Richardson in their Florida loss you said that why can't USC win the Pac-12 and go to the playoff I, I'm just saying listen hey. that that is Colin I know like people will say like well you know Colin he, he loves USC I'm just telling you like I see it this version of USC is absolutely a version of USC that Lincoln Riley could win a conference with and go to a playoff with. They're playing that well so far. Will it keep up? I'm not sure. And you know why the reason? Their only tripping point? Health. Because if Williams goes down or Addison goes down, then who knows? Who knows what's going to go on? Well, I mean, but if I go down the, 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 this poor network. Well, Jason oh, would be fine, so, and I, I mean, could probably step in, and I'm sure the show would do just fine <laughs> at that point. Although it is called The Herd. Yeah. I want to give you your respect. Yeah. It, is, it is your show. Okay, so, but the point being is you brought in data, and I can't, dis I can't disagree with them at all. All right, let's go to, okay, so this is the way, this is where college football fans are crazy. There's something about the plaque on the wall. Hmm. Like an NFL fan can acknowledge, I don't like my quarterback. <laughs> Fire the coach. College football fans can't do that. They just, if, 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 like, people just don't like Jim Harbaugh. Oh, they're fourth in the country. Sure. They just made the playoff, beat Ohio State fourth. Again. He's pretty good. Brian Kelly, won everywhere. Don't like him. Okay. A little cringy. All right. And so, Sark, for whatever reasons, USC, arrogant, stumbled in life. Oh, I don't know. A lot of fans are doubters. I watched that game against Alabama. And I said this yesterday, and I'm probably wrong, but I'm like, that was one of the few times I, I thought somebody out-clevered and out Fox Nick Saban. Well, and I thought they just outplayed Alabama for the majority of the game. I mean, Alabama didn't do anything offensively for a big stretch of that game. There was six uh, punts in a row. Four of them were three and outs in the middle of that game right. for Alabama's offense. With Bryce Young. With Bryce Young, you know, and and – they felt like they had fixed the running game. They didn't. And this is not a defense that had a track record of dominance. You know, Texas's defense did not play well last year, in particular stopping the run. And they came out there and, and really won the line of scrimmage outside of the one run. In fact, you know, I'm just going to bring you data all day, okay? Did you know that outside of the 81-yard touchdown run from McClellan, the running backs for Alabama averaged 2.6 yards per carry? Can I throw, can I throw a thing at you? Yeah, a, a please. theory. And so, when Pete was dominating the Pac-12, one of the big advantages was the rest of the conference was weak. Yep. He got whoever he wanted to. The Big Ten was weaker. 
He was literally Denver West cherry picking anybody he wanted. Out yeah, of that's right. Nick Saban, Tennessee was a mess. Auburn was a mess. Georgia was a mess. Now Georgia's taken about four to five guys a year that went to Alabama. He's been doing that for four years now. Their pass rush, Georgia's is better. Their speed. No, it's not better than Alabama's. I, I look at Alabama. Not than Will Anderson. Where's the pass rush outside of Will Anderson? Will Dallas Turner. I mean, he knocked Quinn Ewers out of the game. Uh, I mean, kind of which is, by the shot. way, the, the uh, it, uh, you know, I mean, uh, drove him into the ground, him, letter of the law type of deal. Oh. But I, I will, I will say this though, that that pass rush, I still think is one of the best in really in football. Yes, I, I do. And, and the reason they won is because they knocked Quinn Ewers out well, of the that game. That was a cheap shot. It wasn't a cheap shot. I mean, it's a, it's, it's a hit, drove him into the ground. I mean, it, it draws a flag, but I don't think it was cheap. Oh. I, I, I will say this about Alabama. I am not going to make the same mistake that I did a number of years ago sitting on this couch doubting Nick Saban. Nick Saban has evolved and adjusted better than any coach in the history of college football. All right. He has won over a series of recruits. He has won over a cycle of different uh, staffs. They will figure out a better way to run the ball. They will figure out a better way to attack with their wide receiver core, which was largely corralled by Texas. Here is one thing, though, that I, that I would give you that I, that I think is interesting about this Texas. You bring up Sark, and I want to just talk briefly about Sark. And I went into this at great length on, on uh, one of my podcast episodes this week. Um, I talked about the, the meetings with Sark and Nick Saban, and they were fascinating this, this week, last week, I guess. But I was meeting with Steve Sarkeesian first, and we were going to meet with Nick later in the day. This is Friday. And Steve was just talking, and we were meeting with players, and it, and it kind of dawned on me. I was like, man, it just feels different. I don't know why. It feels different than the last 10 years at Texas. I don't know why. I couldn't put my finger on what felt different. I just kept telling Gus and, and our producer, something's, something's better. Something's more cohesive. Like, it just feels different in a good way. And then we go to the meeting with Nick Saban later in the day, and it hits me like a ton of bricks. And I was like, that was it. That's what was different about Texas. I asked Nick Saban, what do you still love about this job? What is it? Why are you still doing this? What, you know, like, what do you love about the job? And he says to me, I guess the chase is better than the capture. And all I could think about is that's what's different about Texas now. And he gave a great eloquent answer about it's not about the chase week to week trying to capture a championship. It's actually the chase on a day in and day out basis in order to prepare yourself for the report card of Saturday, which is going to reflect back to you exactly how well you prepared Monday through Friday. Great answer. Yeah. Like only you can get from Nick Saban, right? The chase is better than the capture. And it dawned on me. That's what's different about Texas. They no longer wanted to sit there and talk about being back. They no longer wanted to sit there and talk about the destination of where they wanted to be. Yeah. They just talked about the chase. What are we doing today to make ourselves better? And I thought that was one of the reasons why I came away from that game, even in a loss, even with their quarterback being knocked out, bullish on the Texas Longhorns. By the way, here's Klatt's top ten. Uh, it's For all you Harbaugh haters, uh, you got to go cry in your soup here. But he's got, <laughs> Mich got Michigan four. He's got USC five. USC is great offensively. I don't know if they're five. Uh, you got you know all your teams in there. They're okay. good enough. Okay. They're good enough on offense. 8.62 yards per play, okay. man. That's crazy. That is. Okay, so here's my thing. I know it's not a, a great topic, but, it, but I do think it's a reality. And sometimes things just change. The newspaper industry. We still, yeah. need, okay, we still need journalists, and there's a lot of great ones out there. Big J journalists. Yeah. Okay, but the distribution system changed in America. Yes, where I can get everything on my phone urgently. So it's just newspapers, nobody to blame. It's not their politics, they've always leaned left. It's not that the writers aren't any good. The distribution mechanism for delivery to the audience changed. Okay. I get everything on my phone within one minute. It's I don't true. have to read day old news tomorrow morning when you throw it on my porch. So it's nobody to blame, it changes. So here's my Nebraska thing, they fire Scott Frost. The world's changed, hmm. okay, is that every game's on television. Every game used yeah, to be. Yeah, it's not like mid-'80s no, or it's like no. Nebraska, Notre Dame, Oklahoma. There were like eight 
Northern powers, Washington, Nebraska, Michigan, Penn State. And then, and that's where you had to go play mostly to be on television. Everybody's on TV. Yeah, every game. And I'll be damned if I'm going to play in cold weather in Lincoln, Nebraska, if I got choices. I think Nebraska's done as a program. No, I, I wouldn't say that. And I think that. that I know. I'm, what, the, am I, the, look at J-Mac. Is, what? The, the, the developments of the last eight months went in Nebraska's favor in a big way. And let me tell you why. Okay, I just want to paint paint a scenario for you. Trev Albert was very close to firing Scott Frost last year. Yes. Okay, and people were surprised, by the way, when he decided to retain him under a new newly worked contract, and yeah. Scott was kind of betting on himself, and it was like, okay, well, he's got a winner. He's definitely out. He didn't, and now he's definitely out. But think about if they would have changed right then. USC and UCLA had not moved to the Big Ten, so the separation of the SEC and the Big Ten away from the other conference had not occurred yet. They had not signed their massive media deal, nor had it become very public about what those numbers were going to be, right. in particular in the SEC and the Big Ten. Now you fast forward to the current day, and we understand so much more about the future landscape of college football, namely being that the Big Ten and the SEC are really going to be driving college football in particular from an economic fashion, they're likely going to have more seats in the playoff. Uh, the revenue that they, every coach in America now looks at himself and is like, you know what? I, I need to get in one of those seats. two conferences. I need to get in the big 10 or the sec. So coaches that last December would have not taken Trev Albert's call probably take his call. Now uh. I'm looking at guys like, let's just throw them out there. Okay. okay? Matt Campbell. At Iowa State. I get that. Kalani Sataki at BYU. Uh, Dave Aranda at Baylor. Uh, you might be thinking, know. like, why would he leave? Well, I mean, is he going to sit in the Big 12? Like, what is the Big 12 going to look like? Is the Big 12 going to be a conference? Uh, Who knows? I mean, are they going to have enough money in their rev share to pay him what Nebraska yeah. could pay him? So I, I, I do think that the structure of college football is going in a way in which, and I said this again this this week, Nebraska fans just sit tight. I, I'm not ready to say that they're done as a program because I've seen teams like Wisconsin and Iowa play very well. I've seen teams like Northwestern go and play for a Big Ten title. P.J. Fleck has won 10 games and is, again, on, on the road to probably double-digit victories this year. I think Minnesota could win the, the Big Ten West. So you can do it at Nebraska. It's just going to be difficult, and you've got to really put your nose to the grindstone. All right. All right. Uh, Michigan, they got... The kid at quarterback yeah, now. JJ. JJ. Um, you talked about him, JJ McCarthy. I'm tickled that Harbaugh wins because he's a little odd and he's a little different and he drives people nuts. <laughs> and these are all things I like about public figures that are authentic. Jim is Jim through and through and doesn't care what you think. And I'll tell you something. This is, by the way, this is like an interaction I have every single week. And they're like, what's Colin Coward like? And I'm like, Colin Coward is, is Colin Coward through and through. Yeah. I, and you're authentic. And that's why I weird love coming on and, this show. And me, I don't say weird. I just say okay, authentic. So I like when Harbaugh does it, even though he says stuff sometimes and I cringe. Once again, you all you guys can whine and complain. He's got his quarterback situation, right? Clemson doesn't. A&M can't score. All these guys everybody loves. They say the right stuff. Harbaugh's clunky, yeah. you know, bull in a china shop. And I watch them, and I'm like, they're fourth in the country, and I think that's exactly where they should be. They should be right there. They're I totally good. agree. They are very good. Now, they're playing nobody right now. They're 51-and-a-half point favorites against, yeah. uh, against Hawaii. So, I mean, let's and I mean, they got You play who's on the schedule. I get that. But if you're going to say well, you play who's on the schedule now, then you better give that, you know, opportunity to Texas A&M in November when they play UConn or when Mer Mercer mm -hmm. rolls into Tuscaloosa. I will say this, though. He's had to walk a tightrope with this quarterback situation because yes. he has a kid in Cade McNamara that just beat Ohio State for the first time in a decade and won the division and won the Big Ten and took him to a playoff and by the way saved Jim Harbaugh's legacy at Michigan yeah he was the quarterback that did that and yet there's an acknowledgement both from the fan base and the coaching staff and probably even the team the better version's probably J.J. McCarthy. Yeah. And it's a different offense, by the way, this year, and a different team. Last year, they were built like a big truck. Oh, You know, they're going to run the ball, stay safe with the ball, <laughs> and play great defense. This year, they're a little bit more of a sports car. They've got great wide receivers, really good tight ends, great backs, and it's an offense that could potentially average 45, 46, 47 points per game, and you might need that upper-level athlete like J.J. McCarthy to maximize the potential of the offense. Hey.
You go on the road to Hawaii, crazy things happen. It wasn't even on the road. I mean, that was in Ann Arbor, yeah. So, you know, 51 and a half points. It was a, not even an almost upset there, by the way. Yeah, I didn't see it. By the way, if A&M loses to Miami this week, they're staring right down the barrel of one and five. They've got to go to Arkansas. Well, not to Arkansas. They play Arkansas in Arlington and in, in Jerry World. Then they would have to go by to way, Mississippi State and then to Alabama. How about this? How about all those <clears throat> boosters shelling out millions for high schoolers and they can't beat App State? Well, there's no excuses anymore at Texas A&M. They have supported their program as well as any fan base in the country. By far. Facilities, personnel. Money. Jimbo got the 10 years. They, they just, you know, they got the best recruiting class of all time. And, and then they got housed by App State. Eight, 186 total offensive yards. Crazy. You know, kids, you can always transfer to the West Coast. Things aren't, <laughs> things aren't, a college station is a snooze. LA's not, a lot of stuff happening here. Oh my music gosh. Music festivals, beautiful people out music here. Music festivals, I've never been to one music festival in LA. There are concerts and good ones. You've never music been to, festival? You've never been to Coachella? That's not in LA, that's, that's two hours away. LA County is massive, it's on the cusp of LA. That's not in LA County, folks. That's hey. in Palm Springs. Put your cowboy hat on, you go out to the desert, and you may come back in two pieces, but it is a good time. By the way, Coachella, time. closer to Arizona than it is L.A. <laughs> Just saying. Hard I, facts. Big I'm J a, journalism. By right the way, there. that Fresno State game, I may have to go to that one. You probably should. Fresno's not bad now. They're going to beat Fresno State. Oh, okay. 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 Let's not, I mean, I, yeah, you, a lot I of backed you, got, you up. I told them they're, like, I think they are a legitimate playoff contender. I just thought they could be, like, a top 10 team this year. Remember when he no, first got so hired? So did I. I thought they were, like. I was I, like, yeah, they'll, they'll probably, like, creep into whew, the top 10. I, that, this is a legitimate playoff when are you type gonna, of year. When are, you, when are they going to put you on one of their games? Uh, are they willing to kick at 9 a.m. West Coast time? Mike Bone, 9 a.m. West Coast. Make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, let's face it. Joel Clatt, everybody. Good work. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.